All right, so we're gonna give it a shot at uh, doing that bridge surface again, except this time we're gonna we're gonna use hexagon panels rather than um, trying to just do the simple quads. Uh, so we'll go ahead and divide our surface. Uh, we'll just take the default for now, and let's go ahead and make a new curtain panel pattern based. And we'll switch this up to the hexagon panel. And I'm not going to bother too much with parameters uh, for right now. I just want to get the geometry in there. I'll probably do a follow-up video to this one that's got parameters. Uh, so I need to create a center plane because I'm going to start to pull these pods up and they're going to be faceted for now. Uh, we'll take this kind of one step at a time. I'll add that reference line and now I'm going to add some reference points. And then on these reference points, I'll tab to those and select them. I'm going to add reference lines again. And I'll use these to drive the height. Let's make them a little taller. I built this early and I know that we'll be able to read it better if, if they're a little taller. And I just did that visually. Um, if I go in and drag it now, I could probably get them to line up. I could try to align them. Let's try to set one of these planes as our plane. So I set the vertical line on that one. And I'll try to align to that point. Uh, they're not built on the same plane, so it's not going to let me do it. That's all right. One's eight foot three. There we go. Do it the simple nudging, old-fashioned way. Now let's go ahead and build up a kind of armature to build these surfaces on. And I'll do this with reference lines, and I'll turn on 3D snapping. So I'll hit escape and then just keep going with my 3D snapping. And I hit escape again. I can orbit while I'm trying to make sure to stay on the point. Uh, Revit does some pretty smart stuff with the points when they're on top of each other. It knows to which one to keep and, and which one to get rid of. So now we'll go ahead and select these edges. And we'll just make faces. And I'll tab to make sure I don't get the edge of the geometry. Build up the faces. Again, I'm tabbing. So now we've got all our faces here. Um, I'll probably select them all and change their materiality to glass. And I should probably be using material parameters, but just to do it quick and easy. I'll set this to shaded. So there we go. Now we've got our panels. And let's go ahead and try to load these into the project and see what we get. And down here, under the family that we load, they should come in now. So there we've got our panels on here. And they're actually flipped, which that's okay, because someone asked a question about this uh, on the forum. 
or in one of the comments. So let's deal with the flipping first. We'll select the whole panel and then there's component flip and component mirror. Let's do component flip first. There we go. Now they're done on the outside. And what component mirror would do is would mirror them. So this particular geometry is having a hard time cutting around the edges. So what I'm going to do with this one is come over to the instance properties and tell it to, for border tile not to do border, uh, not to do partial. I'm going to tell it to do empty. So now it's not trying to cut those edge panels, which is tricky to generalize, right? Because it's um, it's doing something different on every single edge of this panel. So for now, I'd rather just leave it off. I'd I'd probably custom model each one of those if necessary. And um, now to fill in this gap, I'm going to increase my divisions by one up here. So now I'm, now my grid is closer to the edges. So now I've got those panels on there. Uh, let's go back to the component and let's add a, a frame. Um, I'm actually going to hide this geometry temporarily. And now when I make a reference point, I'm making it on the reference line. Makes it a little easier to pick things. And so there, that point's been put on that reference line. I'll draw a circle on there. I'll probably make it a bit bigger since um, those panels in that project are pretty big. And I'm going to tab around and select my reference lines on the edges. And make sure I select my profile and I'll create form. So now I've got my frame. It's a little disproportionate here because uh, it's much smaller than it's going to be in the project. Uh, and while we're here, let's go ahead and make these bigger. So I select the line first and then I can grab that point and drag it up. Let's go with something like uh, 15 feet. And uh, I'll make a follow-up video talking about the parameters because we need to be pretty clear on what what's driving what and how we set um, the hierarchy in these families. I'm going to undo there because I think I was um, I wasn't going straight. There we go. So we don't have to unhide that panel. Well, we can just to, for cleanliness sake. There it is. And let's go ahead and load this back into the project. We'll override with existing and parameters. And there we go. Now we've got the panel and the frame. And let's change our materiality a little bit. We won't use render settings. We'll drop this to like 50. Or increase it, I should say. So there we go. So there's the panels with hexes. This is uh, quite a bit closer to the model I built in Max um, for the, the cut and paste competition. But um, but there it is working. The hexagon panel is working nicely. Um, and, uh, and some pretty interesting geometry to have in Revit. So if you have any questions, feel free to post them in the comments and we'll try to get back to them as soon as possible.